So how do archaeologists know what stone tools were actually used for? Sometimes these tools can be compared to modern tools, or they can be compared to tools observed in ethnographic accounts. However, comparison isn't always the best determination of function and can lead to false conclusions. Many tools like flake tools don't have an obvious function and need a more objective method of determination. Useware analysis uses experimentation to have this kind of objective determination of stone tools functions. Traces of wear and polish on experimental tools used in the present can be compared to archaeological examples of tools in order to get an idea of what these tools were used for. This useware can show archaeologists what the type of material the tool was used on, what kind of motion the tool was used in, and how this tool was hafted to a handle, if it was hafted to a handle at all. Most importantly, microware analysis data can have insights into the broader aspects of an archaeological culture. It can reveal things about how cultures produced objects that don't preserve well in the archaeological record, like organic objects. It can give insights into craft production, it can give insights into utilitarian and ceremonial object use, and it can give insights into ancient food ways, everything from hunting animals to agriculture. Use our analysis is based on the observation that when stone tools are used, wear and damage patterns occur that are specific to the material that the stone tool was used on. Use wear can occur as damage, polish, pitting, or striations on the stone tool surface. There are two kind of categories of use wear analysis. There's low power magnification, which uses magnification less than 50 times, and high power magnification, which uses magnification greater than 50 times. Use wear analysis can be conducted by eye, which is macroscopic use wear analysis, with a hand lens, with a microscope, and even with specialized equipment like an atomic force microscope or a scanning electron microscope. Microscopes, like the normal kind, are the most common type of object for use wear analysis, as they provide a lot more information than hand or eye magnification and are much less expensive than a scanning electron microscope or atomic force microscope. I should mention that residue analysis is its own form of analysis. Residue analysis looks at the bits of a material that adhere to a stone tool or other object and studies their chemical makeup. Use or analysis looks at the actual wear, damage, and polish that occurs to the stone tool surface and is permanent. Microware analysis can show the material that the tool is used on, the motion in which this tool is used, and how this tool is hafted or used without being hafted. Contact with different materials like stone, wood, bone, grass, meat, and hide all have different forms of polish that are left behind on the stone tool and are distinct from one another. Some of these polishes are flatter and more reflective, and others have a more pitted appearance, and it just varies from each kind of material. Different motions will leave a different kind of use wear. For example, sawing through a piece of antler will leave different kinds of use wear on a tool than shaving the same piece of antler. Use wear traces can form from when a tool is hafted and used. The friction between the tool and the handle that it's in will leave polish that can be observed. When I was in grad school and doing my master's thesis, I used a use wear analysis. I wanted to determine the function of lamellar blades from a specific middle woodland site in Illinois. This site is known as the Mound House site. Lamellar blades are a long, specialized flake with parallel edges that is detached from a prepared core. Lamellar blades were made by middle woodland people, but they were also made along bifacial and flake tools which kind of makes them a redundant tool form. So I wanted to know why they did this. So why did these middle wooden people make these lamellar blades? I hypothesized that the function of these blades somehow related to the specialized ceremonial activities that took place at the Mound House site. Some microware analysis studies do make their own experimental data sets for comparison to their archeological data sets. While I did make and use some lamellar blades as practice for my thesis, I did use other studies with more rigorous experimental datasets 
to compare to my archaeological assemblage that I was using. So before a stone tool can be analyzed for use where, it has to be cleaned. Dirt, dust, and oil from people's hands all leaves residue upon the stone tool surface that needs to be cleaned off in order to see this use wear. Leaving it on can obscure the use wear or lead to misidentification. The artifacts that I used were cleaned using an ultrasonic cleaner, using soap and water, and then were rinsed in water, and then left to dry. Once dried, these tools were mounted to a small piece of clay and put under a microscope using high power microscopy. Using magnifications from 50 to 500 times, I examined these lamellar blades, looking at their edges primarily, but also looking at things like ridges and other places where use wear might form. Use wear analysis does take lots of hours of practice, so it took me a little while to get the hang of it. Once I identified an area that looked like it had use wear, I used the computer that the microscope was hooked up to to take pictures of this use wear and use them for identification later. Once I had these photos, I could compare them to other studies' experimental data sets. Sometimes I didn't really have good enough photos and I had to go back and look at the stone tool again. And other times I had to ask my thesis advisor for advice on what he thought that the use wear was, since he also employs microware analysis. What I found with the Mount House assemblage is that most of the Muller blades were being used to cut meat, with hide working being the next largest category of use wear, and after that, antler and bone working. Lamellar blades at Mount House were a generalized tool used for a wide variety of purposes, but they were not a specialized tool used for a single purpose or several purposes, and other studies seem to support this. My thesis's use wear data seems to show that meat processing was important at the Mount House site. This may relate to special ceremonial activities that were going on there, such as communal feasting. These lamellar blades may have been used to process all the meat that was shared and distributed among these people. There was a little evidence that lamellar blades were used for the production of craft goods at the Mount House site. What the blades did show is that people were doing activities like hide working at the Mount House site, showing that they didn't stop doing these normal daily activities when they went to these special ceremonial locations for communal gatherings. While my use or data didn't support the idea that people at the Mount House site were producing ritual craft items, what it did seem to support is the idea that people were coming here for communal ceremonial activities. So in conclusion, microware analysis can give archaeologists a good idea of how individual stone tools were used in the archaeological past. Use of analysis allows archaeologists to determine the function of these tools beyond comparison with both modern tools and ethnographic tools. Knowing how stone tools are used in the past allows archaeologists to know more than just how these tools were used, but allows us to draw broader implications about how people interacted with each other and the environment around them. Hopefully you enjoyed learning about microware analysis and what I did for my master's thesis. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel and are stay tuned for future videos. I've got some really cool projects coming your way.